We're going to look at him. And we talk to him. It is estimated each year about 325,000 Americans die from sudden cardiac death, many because they didn't receive immediate attention and likely CPR. So Virginia Hospital Center in Arlington County are on a mission to try and train every single adult who lives and works in the county what's called hands-only CPR. And joining us, Lieutenant Robert Bowen of the Arlington County Fire and EMS and patient care director Stephanie Dubin. It's great to have you both here. Thank, Thank you for having us. Why is it important to do this hands-only CPR? Because for a lot of people that's probably a change from what they were taught. When you People are nervous about giving breaths. So when somebody collapses, especially a teen or an adult, it's usually because of a heart problem. Their heart stops beating, and what they need are compressions so that you can start pumping blood for the body again. So it's really simple to do compressions. So we just put our hands in the center of the chest and pump away. You're going to have to widen out a little bit so that you can see this now. So I, I, I want people to be able to, to take advantage of this. So there we go. All right. So somebody collapses, mm -hmm. we're going to call 911. Yes. Put our phone on speaker. Turn the volume up so the dispatcher can hear you. Put your phone down next to the patient, and then if they don't respond, they're unconscious, you just put your hands in the center of the chest, you start pushing on the chest. And that's all you do until help arrives. It's really that simple. There we go, there's the phone in place. Yep, and the 911 dispatcher can actually talk you through what to do if you start to forget or you're getting anxious. You can talk to them while they're on speaker and they can actually walk you through exactly what to do until help arrives. The, the concern is, again, I don't know how fast I do it, I don't know how hard I do it. You really shouldn't worry about that, should you? No, you don't have to worry about how hard you push. Push as hard as you can, but you do want to push about 100 to 120 times per minute. But what we tell people to do is to sing the song by the Bee Gees, Staying Alive. Mm -hmm. That helps you keep on track. How long do I do CPR? If, if I come on a scene, obviously there's a patient in distress. I think I can help a little bit. How long? Sure. So you want to do compressions until they start moving or making noises, some sign of life, mm -hmm. or until help arrives. So in this area, help arrives quickly. So you just, you're continually doing compressions until the help gets there. For, hopefully there's somebody else to help help you out because to it, does, you. it doesn't get tiring. It, it, yeah. I was going to say, this is, a, this is a physical exertion. You need to, to, to sort of make an analysis of your ability to help here. And if you get tired and there are people standing around, you need to enlist them in this, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. It's important to know, though, that by starting this, just this simple act of doing that bystander CPR as soon as it happens can double or even triple their chances of survival. So this is critical that we get this before EMS arrives. And when you think about that number we talked about before, 325,000, and, and that's kind of a ballpark figure in there, if you could save a third of that number of people by just being able to mm -hmm. do what you were showing us there, think of the difference in, in the quality of life that makes for whoever's family that is, for example. Absolutely. We commonly encounter patients where CPR is not being done, and all they need to do is press on the chest and call 911. And if they don't do that, they end up in a nursing home or they die. Go through the, the steps again because it's, I think it's, it's so critical because what you talked about is, sure. first of all, yeah. everybody's yeah. got a phone, right? So get your phone out. <clears throat> so you, the, the person went unconscious. They collapsed. You give them a shake. Sir, ma'am, are you okay? There's no response. They're unresponsive. You call 911, put your phone on speaker, get the volume up so you can hear the dispatcher, and then put it down so you can talk. If they're not responding, they're unconscious, you need to start compressions. Put the heel of your palm in the center of their chest. On adults, we use two hands. You just push down, and you go about two inches deep, and you just push hard and fast, about two compressions a second. And that's all you have to do until help arrives. Absolutely. It's that simple. My guess is, Stephanie, you've talked to some people who have had their lives saved by doing this. Oh, absolutely. What do they say? When we talk to people who have gone through this experience, their only thing they can say is how grateful and how thankful they were that we had people who happened to be there. Um, I think a lot of the time there's, there's no one around who can do it. So those people who survive in a, you know, an episode like this, they're just incredibly thankful for the people who happened to be there. And that's our mission, is to make more people in the community available to do this. Can we get everybody in the county doing this, do you think? That is our goal. Absolutely. And it's a terrific goal at that. Uh, Lieutenant Robert Bone, of the Arlington County Fire and EMS Department, and Stephanie Dubik, who's Director of Patient Care. Thank you so much. It's really good to have you. And at Virginia Hospital Center, I want to make sure that I gave the hospital credit on this. This is terrific stuff. Thanks for joining us. Let's get a check on traffic right now. Eric Smith standing by live in the News Channel.